Hello and welcome back to Edgewater, Saskatchewan. Yes, I sound like Kermit the Frog. Yes, I've been I've been ill uh, the past few days. I'm still currently sick, um, but I am trying to bring out these episodes. I have done a couple of live streams with my friends where I still sound like Kermit the Frog, and uh, yeah, I need to get more episodes on this done because I'm really enjoying this series. So we've made some big changes to the farm since you have been here. I've uh, sold all of the silage bales. I did put some in our feed mixer uh, and sold all the rest that was in that field. We still do need to pick up the hay but uh, yeah, I, I've been busy. I, I can't remember if I showed you that I picked up all the straw. That poor little Volvo. Oh, that poor little Volvo. I ended up having to buy a Load King. Uh, so we'll we'll get this done, and I will show you. Brought a low. Uh, yeah, brought brought that uh, Load King. That was it brought the load king. I've also had to make a couple of sales as well. We have sold some pieces of equipment to make way for some new pieces. These fields are huge. I mean all of our fields now I do believe have been cultivated. But uh, let's have a quick look over here. Yes, as you can see, all of our fields have now been cultivated over here. There's just this little one here that needs cultivating. So there's that. Uh, we are going to, right now, be putting wheat in this field. We're going to need the straw. And also, we're going to need the wheat to put into our feed, uh, our um, seed maker. He says, geez, one of these days, one of these days. So that's why I'm putting wheat in this field. Uh, I'm not sure about the other fields. Maybe we'll put wheat in there. Or maybe a bit of barley. I'm not entirely sure. But we'll see. We'll see. Because so we do have flux planted. Uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what piece of equipment is needed to harvest flux but I guess we'll find out as you can see right now we have this old girl on the old cedar and uh, honestly I used this tractor this cedar and course play on that big field just in front of us and it actually did a really good job just you know just being able to pivot in the middle uh, actually helped it out so yeah I'm kind of glad we didn't sell this tractor we did end up buying another one though oops my bad you know me I like my bargains if I see a good bargain I'll get it and uh, that is exactly what I did and once we got this field done like I said we will go and have a look at the big changes and when I say big changes Look at the size of these fields. One machine in particular did this field or did it finish doing this field and did this field on its own. Which was really good. The piece of machinery was able to use the harvester line that I've already put in with course play field large, the JD line for the harvester so that was always a good thing but like I say we did have to make some sales kinda sad but right now it, it is what it is I do want to possibly like I said look at possibly another cow pen or maybe some pigs or, or something just to get us that decent amount of slurry for organic fertilizer because right now we do not have that many cows 
I mean, there are little pieces around the edge of this field that I've missed. Uh, I've got to stop being so finicky. These fields are absolutely huge. So, uh, yeah, like that little piece on the edge there. My OCD does kick in, but I can't spend another while, you know, constantly going around all the edges of the fields. I, I just don't have the time for that. Or as the meme goes, ain't nobody got time for that. I definitely haven't. Right, so, you are done. Let's lift you up for now. Oh, jeez. Oh. We'll get you put in this field in a minute. Right, here we go. Let's pull in this field. Just cut the engine off. Right, so... Like I was saying, I did... Just move that out of the way. I did have to sell some machines. And the machines that I sold is... I sold the John Deere 560M baler, the little John Deere round baler. I sold that. And I sold the New Holland SP400F sprayer, the big self-propelled sprayer. I sold that. Uh, because, like I said, I do want to go into organic fertiliser. So, yeah, that, that that's going to be absolutely glorious. Sold all of the silage bales that were over in the big grass field. I've sold all of those and put some, of course, into our feed mixer for the cows. Oh, that did give us a nice amount of money. But... What did I buy with that money? Well, as you can see over here, we've still got the Volvo. There it is, in all of its glory. But I brought the Load King flatbed trailer. There it is, I brought that. I've been really busy loading all these up. As you can tell, this thing's filthy. 3.7 hours. To load all these bales from the field well not really from the field but from here <laughs> to in there it blew my mind I because I you know I just had the radio on and away I was going but <coughs> the real big change that is gonna help us in these fields that did do all of field 31 on its own is can you see the wheels what do you think it is it's blue it's blue the Ford 9880 look at that beauty it is a tuned version which is absolutely stunning. It does have a lot of horsepower. It's got 1.4 hours on it already. Oh, it took me over an hour to cultivate that field. And that was with this. This is the Copomat 1570 Max. It's a big boy. But it still took me over an hour to cultivate that field with this. So that is the big change. We have this big beastie. But that does leave us a little bit short. Let's just chop that and this one. There we go. I wish there was one trigger just for both doors. That'd be nice. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. I still do have the hay bales out in the field. Yeah, I know. I need to get on with it. But so far... We're not doing bad. We don't have that many fields left to do. Uh, we've got, it looks a lot, but it's only three fields. We've got this big one here. We've got this one here. And we've got this one there. Do need to cultivate this field here. So I think whilst we get course play here on this one, uh, doing some wheat, uh, we'll head on over, we'll get this one cultivated. I, the, the Ford's just going to be too big for that, but I was thinking the possibility of buying one of these fields down here. But the thing that gives me is it's connected to this farm, is it? 
Oh, it's not. Okay. <coughs> Pardon my cough. I thought this field was connected to that farm. It's only 32,000. That's not bad. But I do need a slurry spreader as well, so... Ooh, that's, that's, that's good. It's going to be testy stuff. So, as always, use your hotkey. Let's go through this again for course play on this map. I have had a uh, couple of messages about course play taking a long time. Now, don't get me wrong. Even on my PC, how powerful and fast it is. This big bit here on the right-hand side does take a fair old while, maybe about six minutes, for it to load a course. So, if if it does seem like it's taking a long time, it's because it does have to generate. You have to remember, it's got to generate its way all around those bends, all the way around the curves. It's going to take time. Plus, it has to do the in-between of how you've set it, whether it be one headland, two headlands, or... You know, you start on the centre first. You know, you, you've got to give it time to generate that. It can take a uh, fair amount of time. So, yeah, let's just quickly throw in a save. We'll do that quickly. There we go. Throw in a save. So right now, use your hotkey to bring up course play. If you don't have a course set in your tractor, click on no course, and that will bring up the course generator settings of the 7520 obviously that is the vehicle that we are in um don't know if you, there we go it can see that we are in this field here it has generated the field edge you do need to be careful with this map though because the edge of these fields can clash with the edge boundary of the map so you do need to be very careful with the edge. So what I do is work width. It should automatically generate the width of the tool that you have. We've only got one tool on the back, which is the sealer. So we have the one. Uh, number of headlands is how many times, obviously, you want it to go around the headlands. With a field this size, I normally go for around two, just to give you that little bit of leeway. Because of this, like I said, this area up the top. When it lets me grab it. Oh, oh there we go. Because of this area up here. Two headlands does give it a little bit of room to manoeuvre up and down and around and whatnot in the centre. So, headland, obviously. Do you want it to start work on the headland first? On the centre first? I normally get it to start on the headland first. Then that gives it enough room, like I was saying, to manoeuvre in the centre. Headland corners I normally leave on smooth, so it has like a smooth transitional drive around the corner. At the centre, that's a given. The field centre, I mean, up and down, spirals, racetrack. I mean, you get it, racetrack ran around, spiral, it'll just continue around, around. you get it. I go for up and down, more realistic to real life. Uh, with a tool that I'm using, I do like it to skip a row. So it doesn't have to turn so tightly. Uh, if you do have a machine that is directly three point linked to the back of the machine. You don't really need to skip a row because it's literally directly on the three point link on the back. But because we're dragging one behind us. I do like to give it that skip. So it'll go up one row. Miss the next one. But go down the one afterwards. And then of course it'll go down and then it will come back doing the opposite rows that it missed. Uh, rows per land, I normally have it on six. This basically tells you when the center mode is lands, this may, this many rows are in each block value of 0 to 24. I just leave that at six. I, I don't see the point of messing with that. And in advance, you'll get island bypass mode. What this does is, if you have obstacles in your field, i.e. little islands, or telegraph poles, or electric poles, or, or fences, or things that are literally in your field, uh, this will make a course that goes around it. You can either circle around it, 
which is obvious. You can do simple, it'll just find the simplest way it can find to go around it, or no bypass, which it'll literally just try and go straight through it. It's put it's got no bypass, obviously, because you know, it if if it has no collision it doesn't need to worry about it. Or if you're literally just in a field that has no bypasses, it doesn't really matter. So we can either pick circle or, or whatever, but I just leave it on circle because that's what I'm used to. What you want to want to do is if we drag this over here, click on CP Generate Fieldwork Course. It can take a hot minute. You got to remember the shape of these fields are uh, not exactly worker friendly so you do have to take that into account it doesn't matter how high tech your PC is it will take a hot minute for it to generate the course for these fields I mean the bigger one on the right hand side takes an absolute decade to load this one shouldn't be too bad so hopefully we do alright he says, fingers crossed. Just got to give it a minute. <coughs> oh, and I just got something pop up saying Gi Giants isn't responding. Sometimes that happens. So you do get these things. You know, it's trying to generate a course. As you can see now, look. You know, I had a screen pop up saying Giant's Engine, you know, was failing to respond or wasn't responding. Just click on, no, keep it, don't worry about it. Don't exit it. It is struggling, because you look at all this, what it is it's got to try and do. I mean, it's a, it's a fair old trick that this thing has to do. So there we go, course is loaded. If your page does freeze and, you know, you get that grey clouded look that comes over and Windows pops up. Just just wait for the program to respond. You know, because no matter how fast your PC is, it's got to calculate all of this. And, I mean, it, it's not the easiest thing to calculate. So, once you've got the calculation done here, you can see the trace in the field. Look where the blue arrow is. That's where you need to start. And again, if you don't see your lines, this little eye icon just here, if you click on that and it's yellow, it will show you the starting icon and the ending icon. If you want to see the whole course, click on the eye again. There we go. And now you can see, look, the whole course that it has have to generate in this field. I mean, look at all this funkiness that it's having to do. So, take that into account. The hardest field for it to try and do is obviously the big field that was on the right hand side. Even my PC's like, hmm, Mr. P, that's a big field. Now, I need about five to five to seven minutes to try and figure that one out but hey ho it is what it is I mean you can always drive near the blue arrow as we can see just here I'm just in front of the blue arrow make sure you are facing the way that these yellow arrows are going as you can see they do all go a certain way I like to pull just in front of the blue arrow and then you can get it to go start at your first waypoint the last waypoint which is the finish or the nearest waypoint we want the first waypoint because we are just starting we are on a temporary course because I haven't saved this course Work width, it's already worked it out with the width of the tool that we're using. And tool offset, I've not set any offset. That sounded really weird. I've not offset it from this line. It will try and stay central to the tractor to this line. So what you want to do is click on the start button. There we go, it's automatically dropped the cedar. There we go, you can see it's working. 
and you should see if we go above it is trying to stay central to the tractor and central to that blue track that it has put in and I mean if you accidentally do something you know and you can't see and you've gone oh no I've closed course play what do I do press your hotkey for course play it will bring it up just here I mean you can move it wherever you come in if you want it up there or if you want it in the corner I just leave it here and it's easier to see focusing this on the screen so there it is so just there we go then just click on the eye icon again yellow is start and finish green is all of the course then just click on the X and there you go that will crack on with this field but like I say if it does take a while as you saw whilst I was trying to load this field it did say that Giants engine crashed I just clicked on wait for it to respond and that's even with my PC so even I have issues so I wouldn't worry about it alright so let's get back to the farm you're not the one I want, you're not the one I want, you're the one I want. Did I just finish your job? No, I didn't. Okay. I have a nasty habit of doing that. You're the one I want. Let's go get that cultivator. We'll cultivate this field just round here. There we go. But as you can see, the little green John Deere, John Deere, John Deere, round John Deere baler has gone. The sprayer's gone. Makes me sad, but we needed the money. The fields were massive. This little John Deere, honestly, it was struggling to get all that work done. I mean, we was asking a lot of it, and what am I doing? Let's go back in, shall we? Ooh, wobbly bobbins, calm down, calm down. We need to get in here, get this cultivated. Here we go. So this is the beauty of a tractor. Absolutely love using this thing. Right, lower down. We'll get this ripped up. Oh, I am thinking possibly having some chickens, maybe. A couple of eggs, just having like a little hen house in here or something. Or maybe just ripping this field up and having another cow pasture in this field. I mean, it's not overly massive, but it's possibly big enough to put a cow pen in. We need the slurry, we need the manure. I want to try and keep to organic farming so we're not having to pay out a lot of money for uh, fertilizers. Herbicide, on the other hand, that's going to be another story. We'll have to see. Maybe we'll have to get like a, a weeder. That possibly does a hundred percent weeds. I do think my good friend Seba a while back uh, did an episode where he was doing organic farming, and I do think he found a weeder that does a hundred percent weed removal. If you know which one that is, please do let me know down in the comments. And that will have to be a piece of machinery that we look at getting. I'm actually going to go straight just to make my life easier. Rather than having to keep swerving. There we go. There we are. Really do like this John Deere. Hmm. I like it even more now that I've actually put a monitor inside it. 
look at that. There was a different monitor, but I swapped it out. Because originally, when you turn the engine off, that monitor disappeared. But I took all that out. Well, Rift Simulation took all of that out. And, uh, yeah, I put that one in. It works with a baler, it works with a trailer, and I literally pressed the wrong button. And lifted that up. Great. Great. Oh, and Mr. B. You're doing fantastic. Ooh, dear. Couldn't extend that out. Hmm. I have to also look at the price of cow pens. Or maybe just buy a field and, and throw a cow pen in it. I am thinking pigs. Pigs do give you a lot of slurry. But the root crops though. Oh, the root crops. Don't really want to be doing root crops. Especially with the size of these fields and you know how expensive the machinery is for potatoes and uh, sugar beets and the like is just so expensive there we go, lower down Let's slowly get in there, look at that but I'm looking forward to seeing the flux, you know, we harvested the peas. Uh, do we still have any peas? Ooh, let's have a look. We've got some milk, we've got straw, manure, and slurry. Nope, we've got no peas. We've sold it all. Okay. I was just making sure. There we go. Do possibly need to look at getting a big, big cedar um, for the Ford. So, you know, we can knock out big fields. But then again, it's all about price, horsepower. I mean, the Ford, obviously, it's not going to struggle with horsepower. It's got a lot. Um, but it's just the price of cedars. I mean, possibly look at getting a Kinsey, maybe. Let's have a quick look. What have we got in the bargains? Oh, we've got a sprayer. That could be very handy. Um, cedars. The Amazon. John Deere air, air cart. I mean, we've got these, look. 8.5 metres, but we've got one here. 12.2 metres. 65,800. We could get this tank that holds 6,500. I mean, that is a big difference. It only requires 250 horsepower. Because just these are so expensive. 206,000 for 15 meters. And you take into account 12.2 for 65,800. And of course the tank 26,990. I mean, the only difference between these is the weight by the looks of it. So that is that. But that is going to be it for this one. Nice, short, sweet, 29 minutes. But, yeah, we're slowly getting there. We're getting that other field done with wheat. Hopefully, I'm going to be looking at getting this field done here. And uh, this one just here, I'm thinking about putting cows there. So I'm not entirely sure. But till then, have a fantastic day. Stay safe, and I will see you all in the next one. See you all then.